The Paranormal Chronicles Network presents The Event Horizon Show with your host, Dave Dominguez. Greetings and welcome to the Event Horizon Show. I'm your host, Dave Dominguez. Thank you for taking the time to tune in this evening, afternoon or morning, depending on where you're located on our beautiful world. It's great to be here, and thanks to my good friend, mentor, and host of the Paranormal Chronicles Network, Mr. Gavin Davies, for the opportunity to bring you the Event Horizon Show. As many of you are aware, the ParanormalChronicles.com network presents a channel dedicated to all paranormal subjects. Podcasts and video content produced and hosted by some of the world's leading experts in the paranormal. So please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and never miss an episode. We welcome all participation in your comments and views on our show's topics or pretty much any other topic on the paranormal. Join us on our exploration of the unknown. And for more information, visit www.theparanormalchronicles.com, which is part of the UK's The Paranormal Chronicles Limited. And you can contact me, Dave Dominguez, with any questions and comments at eventhorizonshow at gmail.com. And again, thank you for exploring the unknown with us on the Event Horizon Show, and prepare to leave the universe you know behind. Today we have a special guest, Christina Horrocks, who is a clairvoyant medium. Christina recently was able to make spiritual contact with Mary Kelly, who some may know as the last known victim of the infamous Jack the Ripper. And you know, Jack the Ripper, who from August 7th to September the 10th, 1888, terrorized the Whitechapel District in London's East End. He killed at least five prostitutes and mutilated their bodies in such a manner that could indicate the killer had knowledge of human anatomy. Jack the Ripper was never captured and remains one of England's and the world's most infamous criminals. Hello, Christina, and thank you so much for joining us today on the Event Horizon Show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for having me on again. Well, it's great. I'm, I'm so glad you decided to join us and share your story with us. So, Christina, tell me, did you feel the need to reach out to Mary Kelly, or did Mary reach out to you first? I wanted to reach out to one of his victims, and I, I specifically wanted to reach out to Mary Kelly. So I reached out to her first. Okay, and and what was did you were you able to contact her right away? Did it take some time to reach to to reach her, reach out to her? So my process with this was it took a while. I had to prepare myself to deal with two people, um, both Jack the Ripper and Mary Kelly. Um, she did not want to be contacted at first, and as I have explained in the past, I have played around with my gift a little bit in ways that I shouldn't, and this ended up being one of those times. It, it took me probably a couple of weeks to convince her she could trust me and to convince her that I wanted to get to know her as a person and not as Jack the Ripper's trophy. And I'll explain that term in, in a little bit. Um, it took me a while to convince her she could trust me. What, what was her reaction? Which, at, which at finally first, opened you. Well, at first, mm -hmm. she was very, very angry. Why would I? Why would I bother her? Why would I want to drag this up? I had a very similar situation. I believe I told you before when I contacted the Titanic. The, um, why would you want to drag this up? This was this was misery. This was horror. This was pain. This was done to me. Why would you want to bring that up? Right. Once I convinced her that um, she could trust me, and I. I wanted to help her with her with her human story. Then she started coming through, and she was still very shy. She held back quite a bit, but she opened up a lot more to me. Okay, and does so? She is she frightened? Is she there? Is she scared where she's at right now? No, she she was afraid of him. He would often come in and try to dominate the conversation. He would try to portray her as his trophy. He would every time I would start to talk to her, he would interject in the conversation and and um, react to me and she would back out of the picture and then I wouldn't be able to get her again. So she it, it just took her a while and it took me a while to be able to disconnect him and ignore him mm -hmm. and deal with her story. So he does have a strong hold over her still. He, he tried. She she kept, when we finally were able to communicate, she, she told me that she's at peace now, and that she's happy now, and that she she has, like, almost no ill feelings 
but he would try to dominate. He didn't want her to be seen in that light. He didn't want her to be seen as a person. He he only wanted her to be seen as his. Right. That's um, yeah. Yeah, but but she she told me she said I'm I'm very happy. In fact, um, sometimes I hear their voices. Sometimes they'll portray an image to me. Mm-hmm. And she told me when she got to the other side, there was laughing and dancing. She was she's in a good place. And so, she said most. So, so she has crossed over to the other side. To the oh, line. absolutely yes. She said that she knows that there's always energy like a thumbprint that is left where that happened. And she she almost made it clear that people expect her to be angry. People expect her to be terrified because this happened. And she kind of gave me the impression, you know, they do these tours, these Jack the Ripper tours. Mm-hmm. And they go there and they, they say they can feel her and they can sense her, but She's not there, and that's not who she is, and that's not who she wants to be remembered as. Oh, okay. So she, so she's there. She's at peace. She's on the other side. But, but, but Jack. So I guess he can only, I guess, come between her when she comes out of the light to speak to you. Is that what she has to do? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm not exactly. I guess it's because I was so interested in him, and I. Mm-hmm. I wanted to contact him at first because I've always been curious in the case. But when I tried to get her attention and try to get to know her as a person and take her away from that crime scene, he would interject and he would like constantly remind me this is what I did to her. So he hasn't crossed over. He's outside. <sighs> I, yeah, I don't, I don't think he's crossed over. Mm-hmm. He's one of those that if he has, he can come back and he can interject or he can come back and impose his emotions, which he mm-hmm. has done on me, he's verbally attacked me. I, I don't think he's completely passed over, no. So he's he still has a, I guess he has a soul. Is, is he, Was he human or was he a, was he a demonic type? Of oh, human? no, he was human. He was human. So he had a human soul or, oh, yes, yes. or, or whatever the case may be. I guess he won't cross over because I guess he thinks something's horrible is waiting for him. Is, you know, he's going to meet his fate on the other side. That, that's usually the case. I've come, I've come across a few like him, but I remember um, after I first started talking to you about these experiences, I was talking to my friend, and I had dealt with a very dark doctor at one point, and he was probably the worst, but Jack made him look like a Boy Scout. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he was not he was not a good man, and he... He's not one of those that, you know, you hope in the crossover that they're like, oh, I'm sorry for all the things I've done. He, he's very proud. Okay, so, so Jack's not sorry for anything he did. No. I, I guess he, he knows that he's famous and people still talking about him over 100 years later. Oh, he knew he was famous before he died. Yeah. yeah, he does. He knew that that was the nickname they gave him, mm-hmm. Jack the Ripper, before he died because he used that himself. Right. But, yeah, even now, on the other side, he's... He's very aware, and he's very, like, smug about it. And it doesn't help that we keep talking about it. Um, I guess, is he aware that we're talking about him? Yes. And he, he, he knows because, um, you know, I've had this conversation with you, and I've had right. this conversation about this show with a few of my friends, and my experiences with Jack the Ripper through this, and he, he knows that we're having this conversation. He, he's here. Obviously, he can't do it. He has no power over us, so all he can do is just observe. No, no, no. Yeah, he can, he can observe, but he he has verbally attacked me when I first started making contact past him mm-hmm. with Mary, and and I don't want the focus to be on Jack because right. that's the opposite of what I wanted. But he he called me the c word. He mm-hmm. uh, excuse my language, but called me a bitch. Yeah. He he would get up in my face. And yeah, he'd call me names that I won't repeat, but he's well, he yeah, knows we, I'm. Not. We we yeah. did, yeah. You know, and we won't. You know, and, and that's what cowards do. So you know, they're 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 afraid. They they have some secret that you don't want us to find out. Did you did you get any inkling? You know, not not to talk more about him because we'll we'll stop you shortly. But I, I just would need to like to know if you had any inkling of who he really was in life because there was I don't, so many. He, you know, he didn't show me that. Okay. Um, I saw. Mary Kelly, very clearly, she was a beautiful woman. She was not the kind of woman that I would have expected to be in that situation in her life. She was, she was more of like a lady, yes. and I saw her clearly, but, but Jack, I only saw her as a black silhouette. I could see 
every outline. I could see the outline of his tall, I guess like stove top hat or stove pop pipe hat. I saw every little outline, but completely black silhouette. Well, I, I've read other accounts that they they think they say that Mary Kelly wasn't really even a prostitute. She... Um, she she was. Mm-hmm. This is this is just from my understanding. Okay. She was from the research that I have done. Mm-hmm. This isn't from my experience. She was the only one who had her own room. Okay. She her husband her husband died and she had a boyfriend, but she was in a situation where she had to provide for herself and so she was a prostitute. But she had her own room. She had like her own little room over a store, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Okay. The others yeah. the others were you know, they were they were street prostitutes. Right. So they did their business in the alleyway whereas Mary had a place to take them. That's, pro- that's probably where I got a little bit confused and read, read that. But yes. so, so that's why he had more time to do what he did. Exactly, so. and that's what that's what all the investigators believed was that that's why she was mutilated so badly mm-hmm. is because she was in her bedroom, she was asleep in her bed, and he could take his time and not have to worry about being caught or somebody walking past and seeing. Oh, I see. So, so she was asleep when this happened? Yes. So... When I talked with her, she I, I got an image again. They portray sometimes images in my head, and I see a picture of what they want me to see. And I saw her, I knew, everybody knows, that's so common knowledge. Everybody knows that she was in her room and that she was on the bed. I got the image that she wasn't surprised. She wasn't, so when he came through the door or knocked on the door, that she wasn't surprised, and she was startled out of a sleep, but she wasn't surprised. I, I, mm-hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, she, she had to let him in, though. I got the image that there was no forced entry okay. into the house. That's what she was showing me. Mm-hmm. So he was just so, another customer. And... That, yes. Oh, so that's, that's, that's all news. That's all different. Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't heard anything like that before. She was asleep, or maybe they had already finished their business and she fell asleep. No, no, no. Okay. There was no business done. Okay, there was no no business. Well, it didn't strike me the type that, that he would do that. He, he strikes me the type that he hated women anyway. So, yes. So he would well, there, yeah. There was one lady that he did have sex with and ended up not killing afterwards. Hmm. Yeah, but he didn't. She did not show me that there was anything that happened. It happened very quickly. It was, she almost showed me that there was like really no pain involved. It was over really quickly. So she didn't suffer? No. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. That's not, not, not terribly. I mean, I'm sure that first initial strike or blow, but mm-hmm. yeah. But to the level of mutilation, she was already dead when that happened. So yes. she didn't, okay. All, all, all that stuff was done post-mortem. Too, yes. And, and I'm going to be honest, that's why I picked her. Mm-hmm. Um, because there are so many pictures of his other victims. Um, there was no picture of her because she was so badly mutilated. I, I picture her that way I had no nothing to go off of. I had no picture to... I, I wanted to make sure that everything I saw was what I was actually seeing and not something on a book. You didn't have any pre-impression or anything like that? Right. Is there something that she wants people to know? What, 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 what does she want people to know, if she wants anybody to know anything? Does she have a message for us? Um, I think it was... If I get emotional, I'm sorry, it's because they are here. They know that I'm doing this. Um, her biggest issue was she wanted everybody, she just kept repeating to me, I was going to be a lady someday. And that she was very, very much a genteel lady, if you could be a genteel lady in my chapel and be a prostitute. She, yeah, she just kept repeating to me, I'm a lady. I was going to be a real lady someday. And she was very kind of... Again, I know it's not the kind of personality you'd associate with someone in that life situation, but she had a lot of girlish personality. She, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the other prostitutes were probably very um, jaded in life, very kind of, you know, hard and bitter about life. And she, at one point, I just remember watching her kind of spin around and show me her dress. It was almost like she was just still very girlish and very naive, almost to a certain extent. I don't want to say a little girl, but mm-hmm. she just had this air that, you know, she just always told me, I'm not that that kind of lady. I, I, I want mm-hmm. to be a real lady. So was it, was, She had aspirations to be to better herself then. Yes. And, and I, Was she one of the youngest or the youngest victim? 
she was, yeah, yeah, she was. And she had, so she had her own place and everything. She didn't, I, I guess, I mean, yeah, life was hard, but it wasn't, for her, maybe it would just been a, a little bit better, her situation. Than she wasn't was. sleeping, yeah. yeah, she wasn't sleeping on the streets, and, and you know, a lot of the the women in White Chapel around that time, they would, they would prostitute just so they would have enough money to have a room for a couple of hours a night, right. and and she had her own room. So she was a little bit higher, a little a little bit better off and stuff. And maybe that's what he saw in her. Maybe that's why he picked her. You know, I, I don't I don't know why he picked her other than he didn't he didn't feel satisfied with the others because he had got caught and he didn't feel like he could do what he wanted to do. And he, he was building up this frenzy and then to get caught or have to stop. And so here was this this person, this girl who had her own room, and he didn't have to stop. He didn't have to hold back. And so he just let loose with all of this this rage that he had. Do you think maybe because he was able to let loose with all this rage, per se, that that's why he stopped? Maybe he, he finally got what he wanted? I think so. And I think it was, I think it was also that, I don't know if he cared that he got caught, but I think he also realized that he, he was getting he was getting close mm-hmm. to getting caught, but I think I think unfortunately with her he had satisfied himself mm-hmm. to a point. Yeah. And usually serial killers they'll they'll do that to a point and they'll stop for for weeks, months, or even years and years, and then right, they'll, exactly. they'll go off again. So maybe he he did that. Did you get any inkling of that that he may have continued later on in life? No, because honestly, um, I I didn't try to deal with him after. After I made that initial kind of contact with him, I, I tried to get to her through him. And that's the mistake I made because by trying to get to her through him, I brought him in. And then I realized I really shouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't I didn't really try to communicate with him much. So you ignored I, I him for the most part. I did, yeah. I tried really hard. He didn't he wasn't very easy to ignore. Um it, it took me a couple of months to get him out. So, so. He, still, he still bothered you for a while. Oh, yes. Did Mary stay with you for a while as well? No, because like I said, she was always kind of very shy about talking anyways, and she would start to open up, and she would start to talk to me, and then he would interject. Like, an example, I tried to talk to her, and we were talking about her life situation, how she ended up in that mm-hmm. situation. I was seeing a picture of her. She was so pretty and so so girly, and she had on this floppy hat, you know the floppy hats women used to wear? Yes. And she had this beautiful, like, kind of dark auburn red hair, and it was swept up in a little bun, and she was showing me this picture of herself that she was so proud of, and then it's like a page in a book flipped, and all of a sudden I saw her mutilated on the bed and him standing in front of her, standing in front of the bed, showing it off. He just would not let me. So once... Once I, 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 I think at one point she was just kind of done. She's like, okay, I've communicated with you. I've told you my story. I, I, I want to be done. And she left. Yeah. But the other guy, he wanted attention, so he, he wanted to stick around. Yeah, he did. He, um, I think he tried to verbally mm-hmm. dominate me, and I wouldn't let that, and my spirit guide, Zachary, wouldn't allow it. My spirit guide, Zachary, though, stepped aside so that I could do my thing. I was actually quite proud of myself on how I was able to just tune him out. And once I mm-hmm. stopped the attention, he was gone. So he was just trying to be a bully. Yeah, he was trying to do. very he much trying bully. to be a bully. Well, while you were communicating with, with Mary, did, did by chance any of his other victims try to come in and, and speak to you and maybe try to tell their story? I think at one point she tried to show them to me. Um, they... Sometimes when I try to communicate or somebody tries to communicate with me, it's like you're in a crowded room. As they come forward, Zachary lets them through. And so I think at one point they were there, but um, one lady particular, I didn't know her name. She was kind of heavy set, maybe in her, I want to say her 40s, but I don't know if any of his victims were that old. Um, she was kind of there. But as horrible as it sounds, I just wasn't interested in talking to them at that mm-hmm. point because I wanted to give, I, I wanted at that point to let Mary know that her story would be told and that 
I wanted to make sure that she was at peace, and if she needed help crossing over, I would help do that, because that's what I do. I help people cross over. And and that's when she started reassuring me that she was okay. So it wasn't that I was ignoring the others. I just, at that point, I, I didn't know how many I wanted to load in at that point. Right. So you wanted to concentrate on Mary. Yes. So. Felt a connection with her immediately. I don't. Like I said, I picked her because she was the one I, I knew less about, and I didn't want to be influenced by outside. Sometimes when I try to communicate with someone that's a little more well-known, <clears throat> Zachary will keep repeating, don't picture what you know. Just focus on the person or focus on the place. Don't focus on all the pictures or all the things that you know about it. And so I, I, I picked her because I just didn't have a lot of information about her. I didn't know what she looked like. And but once, once I started communicating with her, and once Jack came through, I almost felt like her protector. I almost felt this immediate kinship with, with her, and I almost felt like I had to keep him away from her. Right. So since you brought her out, you felt obligated to protect her. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Does Mary have a secret? <laughs> she does. She did not tell me that she was three months pregnant at the time she was murdered. Oh, she was, the autopsy report found that she was three months pregnant, and I was very upset and angry that she didn't tell me, and I could not believe that I did not pick up on that. I thought, how could I not know that? And I became very angry and bitter, and I stopped communicating with her over it, because I thought even if she didn't know at the time, she would have told me she didn't feel that was necessary. First of all, I didn't ask her about it. It became all about her and Jack. Right. So I didn't give her a chance to tell me. Um, and she just did not feel like that was important to her message. She didn't feel that that was an important way to be remembered. It was more important to be remembered that she was not a prostitute, that she was a lady. And so she just didn't share that information with me. Oh, I see. Maybe it was too painful for her for whatever reason. She Maybe. Want to do. Were you aware of that beforehand? Or did you find this well, out later on that she was... I, I, I found it. sometimes what I do is, in the past when I have contacted people, I will verify the information with somebody that's a loved one, or um, at one point I had communicated with some minors, and I had my mother look up some information online and and tell me the information so I could verify it. Um, so after I had communicated with her i i found a book that somebody gave me because i knew i was interested and this was in it and it was so shocking it shook my faith in myself it i was like i doubted myself how could i not know this information but it was just i was like i cannot be very good if i didn't know this huge important fact about this woman but mm -hmm. she just didn't feel like she needed to share that and i didn't give her a chance to share it so they keep their their secrets for whatever reason i guess i just well, you no. Know, yeah. Like I said, I I didn't really give her a mm. chance to tell me everything about her life story because every time I would try, he would come in, and so. But she just did not feel that that was who she was. That was not a part of who her life was, and she just didn't feel that that was a necessary thing to tell me. So, not, yeah, she she wanted to be remembered completely different. So are, are you planning to, to reach out to any of the other victims or anybody else in the in the future? Or, or is somebody totally different for the future? You, you always seem to surprise us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to be honest. I, I went into this thinking it was going to be really fun and it was going to be a way of, of interacting with a very interesting historic figure. And I had seen a few other mediums quote unquote, try to contact or channel Jack. And everyone that I've seen, they would refer to him as a very gentle man, a very intelligent man. And I just saw him full of rage, just blind mm -hmm. hatred, rage. And there was no rhyme or reason to what he did other than he, he just was full of hate. Being verbally attacked by him and being confronted by him, I, I don't see me trying to communicate with that scenario in the future. Well, he was a psychopath. Very much so, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, I, I finally was able to tune him out and communicate with Mary, and I may go back with Mary in the future, but to be honest, 
I don't think that that's necessarily something that she wants. She's very happy where she's at. Oh, yeah, sometimes best just leave things alone. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe the other women want to tell their stories, maybe they don't. You know, but again, if it means I have to deal with him, I mean... <laughs> that's, that's true, you don't want to do... You can always deal with somebody more pleasant. You yes. Know? So, you know, like Robin um, Williams or somebody, I don't know. Robin Williams is a hero of mine. Yeah, when cool. I graduated from college and I did my valid Victorian speech, I did it on him. So he he is a hero of mine. Um, you know, sometimes I don't pick them. Sometimes they pick me. And I I don't you know I don't always reach for the stars, so to speak. One of the things that I've been kind of into lately is I've always been into Egyptology, and sometimes when I meditate, I try to find a place to go to astral project or to just. I find a spot that I can focus on and concentrate on while I meditate. And I was listening to some Egyptian music while I was meditating, and I was introduced to a new possible spirit guide. Yeah. And he gave me a bit of a tour, and that's something that, you know, to get to know that guide a little better and bring him in more, I may go a little bit further into into Egypt with that. But uh-huh. Is he Egyptian? Kind of, he is. His name doesn't ring, uh, mm-hmm. doesn't come to mind right now. It's been a while. It was Azed, mm-hmm. I think it was Azed. But he was, he was kind of like my tour guide around some uh, street markets in Egypt and around some of the pyramids and the temples. And he was kind of my tour guide. But oh, okay. I think he's being introduced as a new spirit guide. Was, so was, he, t- was he taking you around um, during the time of the pharaohs, or was it modern times that he was showing you? Oh no, you it was it shocked me. He was showing me the street markets and the the streets were filled with like people and music and, and bustling and laughter and it was awesome and we were kind of on the Nile and as I was looking out at this temple it was lush and green and it was beautiful and there were flowers and you know, when you think of mm-hmm. the Egyptian temples now and, and the pyramids it's very deserts, you know, mm-hmm. but but what he was showing me was there were bright colors and there were paints on the temples and it was reds and golds and greens and there was grass and flowers and trees. It was beautiful. I had never seen Egypt like that, obviously, mm-hmm. you know. Well, what was my understanding, I don't know if it's true or not, but the Nile was actually closer to the pyramids at that time. The Nile has since changed course a bit. It is now further well, away. But, but this wasn't, this wasn't even in areas near the Nile. This was in other areas of Egypt, like Egypt just in general is like this very green, lush oasis, not just near the Nile, because even nowadays near the Nile, it can be very lush. This was... So you think this was so, even further back? You think the pyramids are even older? Yes. Than, than you think. They're, they're, they're yeah. much further back, because that's, that, you know, that could have been like, like the end of the last ice age, predicted. because they're saying the Sphinx is actually much older. It's, it's, it's about 20,000 years old. Right, and and I don't know about like I, I'm just not very good at like time frames t- when I when I travel I'm not very good at telling you time frames because I don't usually get that. Right. But I can tell you that it just was not the Egypt that that we're used to seeing. Wow, that's that's amazing. So, so. Well, and you told but, us kind of the same thing when when. You know, for the, for the listeners, you, you were previously on, on the Event Horizon show when we were with another network, and, and you told us a story about uh, being on an Aztec pyramid, an Aztec temple, and you were shown yes. things. Yes, that one was, it was, that one I was introduced to another priest. It seems, you know, now that I think about it, when I, when I meet these people, they tend to be priests or shaman of their time, like... Like, I'm a clairvoyant medium, or mm-hmm. I would be considered shaman, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. right. So, yeah. when I have met to exchange spiritual ideas or exchange ideas with other people, it, have, it has been of priests or, mm-hmm. sh- or shamans at their time as well. Well, maybe and, it's because they're on the same frequency you are. I believe that, mm-hmm. yes. And the... I have a spirit guide who I call grandmother. She's Native American, mm-hmm. and she's the one that introduced me to this Aztec. Oh, no, he was Mayan. He was Mayan because it was in. Oh, that's right. We were, yes. we were contacting about the Mayan calendar. Mm-hmm. That's so right. We yes. Top, mm-hmm. yes. So we were at the top of of one of the pyramids, and we were in a room, in and we were we were discussing astronomy, and the the stars, and I had told him that we had 
had a man on the moon, and mm-hmm. we had discussed ideas of technology and advancement. And so, yeah. What did he have to say to that? Tell him when you told him we had a man on the moon. It was like a little boy on Christmas morning when he comes downstairs and he sees, <laughs> you know, he was, he was, at first he didn't believe it, he was just very in awe, very in shock, um, but he believed that the stars were miracles, and, and so the fact that we had been onto the moon, he was very surprised, and he was very excited, but he didn't seem, like, shocked. If you remember me telling you the thing that surprised him the most was airplanes and cars. Yeah. That okay. is what surprised him that, you know, we could drive and that we had planes that we could fly through the mm-hmm. sky. That surprised him and that piqued his curiosity more than being in the moon. And, and that's what he saw when he made contact with you. He didn't know that before. Right, yeah. Okay. We. It was like we were two friends. Mm-hmm. Once, I call her grandmother. I believe she's Chippewa. Once grandmother had made the connection between him and I, she stepped out of the picture and it was like two friends just discussing everything. He told me about his culture. He told me about corn and crops. And he told me how his his culture wasn't just murdering and mm-hmm. sacrifices and bloodlust like sometimes we think of the Aztec and Mayans. I remember him telling me we, we have marriages and we laugh mm-hmm. and we celebrate and we have we celebrate births and, and deaths and he was trying to tell me that his culture was so much more than, you know, these head chopping off beasts, you know. And that's, and that's I was true. Telling him, and right and you know, and he was telling me how important crops were to them and how important livestock was and how important mm-hmm. the stars were. And I was explaining to him our culture and that's when, you know, the car so we just sat there at the top of that temple and we just discussed ideas and yeah. discussed our people, so to speak, you know. Right, right. Well, well the, the Mayans and the Aztecs, they, were, they, they weren't maybe advanced, logically wise, compared right. to, to the Europeans at the time or whatever, but, but society-wise, social-wise, and, and the way they had their societies set up was, was much more advanced. They had mm-hmm. they had a lot of the a lot of the things in place that we have. They had a library system. They had a social right. security system way to take care of their their you know their elderly. They had a lot of the social Even things. They did elderly, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they did. You know, but Ben Franklin didn't think up the library. You know, or, yeah. or whatever. You know, that that came from you know, ancient Egypt, but or or whatever they say he did. But but yeah, the, the Aztecs had libraries. They had a what, their version of a social security system. The Mayans did as well. Yes. And, and that's what he wanted. Mm-hmm. I always get this message. It's always like friends talking. And like I said, we just sat in that room and we, and we shared ideas. And you say that they weren't very technically advanced, but they practically invent, they helped invent basically astronomy and the stars. And they knew about the phases of the moon and the, the, the phases of, you know, the rotation and the seasons and how the, the stars and everything affected their planting season. So they knew they were very advanced when it came to yeah. the stars. Well, what I meant that, I mean, they didn't have uh, muskets and footwatch or whatever, right. like, the, like yeah. you know, the Europeans had it at the time, right. so, or gunpowder or anything like that. But, but yeah, that's, that's, that's fascinating. And, and also, you know, if you could touch on also what was real fascinating in our last conversation was, was about the Titanic. If you can touch a little bit on that. So when I first started really getting strong into this, I had learned that I was able to, I guess what they call astral project. I was able to focus on a place and almost spiritually be there. My first experience was I was actually able to sit at Stonehenge. And I remember laying on the grass and looking at the stars at the time of Stonehenge. And the stars were just amazing. And that was such an amazing experience for me that I decided I'd start playing a game with it. And I got into trouble. I, I've learned, well, not apparently because I, I played around with Jeff the Ripper, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, you played around with Jeff the The only person ever I've known that played around with Jeff the <laughs> Right. <laughs> but anyway, so I had, I had a relative that was on Titanic. And so the Titanic has always held a very uh, special place in my heart. And I had decided I wanted to know what it was like to be on the deck of that ship at the time it was going down. I wanted to feel what they felt. I wanted to know what they saw. I wanted to feel what it was like to be on that deck. And 
so Zachary, again, Zachary is my spirit guide. He, I would start picturing the movie, and he'd be like, no, 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 don't do that. And I'd start picturing, like, you know, the, the pictures, and he'd be like, no, 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 don't do that. It was just focus on the, ch- and so he trained me to, because I'd be like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio. You're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> he, he trained me to be able to focus on an item or a place and not worry about everything else in my mind, to shut my mind down and only focus on that. Right. And so um, I focused on the Titanic and it took me a while to get rid of all of the Leonardo DiCaprio mm-hmm. stuff and and put myself on that deck at the time it was going down, and I was freezing to death. Mm-hmm. I'd never known a cold like that. And so I experienced that, and I watched the pain, and I watched for the first little while I was on the deck, and then I was pulled out of the deck of the ship like I was looking at it from like a lifeboat. I was mm-hmm. watching it. Yeah. And so when I came out of that, I had accidentally brought two people back with me and they were very very mad at me Mm -hmm. they were how dare you play around with tragedy this was our death this was this was not a game for us this took our life and here you are playing a game with it and here you are thinking this is just entertainment brought us back and they were not they were very angry with me that I would I would take that so lightly and it was that was my very first valuable lesson that when I, especially when I'm dealing with such tragedy, whether it's Titanic, whether it's with Mary Kelly, when I'm dealing with tragedy like that, I have to, I have to be very reverent. I have to be very respectful and not, not treat it like a game. One, because like, again, I brought those two back and I brought, I brought Jack the Ripper out and mm-hmm. even though I have to concentrate on her. So I just, I, I have to learn to be very careful and reverent and treat it. Treat it with the respect and the tragedy that it is, yeah. because I'm in their world when I do that, and so I have to I have to act accordingly. Well, what happened with the two that you brought back? They left. I, I I apologized. I had explained to them what I you know that I I respected and revered the Titanic and the event, and that I had a loved one on the Titanic, and I was just trying to experience what they went through. Yeah. And they went, like that because they said it was it was ours not yours but they 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 went back they crossed back over yeah well, that's good well, they're at peace so they're all, they're all at peace then everyone oh yeah 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 they are that's great. sometimes I think those of us who are in the paranormal we like to think that all these people who have died in tragic deaths are just weeping and wailing in chains and crying and bemoaning. And the truth is that most of them have crossed over. Most of them have found peace. Yeah. Like I said with Mary Kelly, that energy, that thumbprint is, is still there, will always be there. But that's not them, you know. That's just so, the residual energy. Yeah, yeah. That's so fascinating, fascinating. So, so are, you, are you planning to do anything else later in the future? I would like, like I said, I'd like to, to further mm-hmm. the gift thing. I am a historic buff. I love ancient civilizations. I love ancient history. When I meditate, mm-hmm. I tend to pick more ancient music. Yeah. When when I was trying to meditate and to contact Mary, <laughs> the really strange thing is I would listen to raindrops. It's very rainy in London. Uh-huh. And so I would listen to music, or not music, I would listen to sounds of rain. Oh, wow. And I would use the sound of the water to be on a rainy night in London. And it's, it's hard for me to explain, but if I use the sound of the rain, then mm-hmm. I can focus the water, then I'm London, then the streets, and then I'm there. Mm, that helps. Uh, and yeah, it, it's it, that's kind of like my internet cable kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> after after I found Mary's little secret, I shut down and I was I doubted myself and I was like, I I must be a fraud if I can miss such a such a huge deal that I must be a fraud. There's no way I could have missed that. But the last couple of days. Before I knew I was going to, to do this with you, I, I tried to get back with her, and, and that's how I knew that's just not something that she chose to share. So I've just got to have faith in myself and my gift and my ability and realize that, you know, I'm I'm right about 85, 90% of the time that mm-hmm. I can get things wrong. And right. just because I 
something wrong doesn't mean I'm a fraud. I've just been starting to, to meditate again mm-hmm. and to get my, my guides back in, in touch with, well, get me back in touch with them because they never left me. Yeah. But get in touch with them and we'll see what, what happens. Well, that's great. Well, we hope to hear from you in the future. And Christina, thank you for being with us. We really appreciate your time and sharing your stories with us. And we hope also hope Mary's okay with us sharing her story as well. Jack, I really don't care what he thinks, so. <laughs> Mary, Mary <laughs> you know, is, never have, Mary, never will. <laughs> right. Mary's kind of, she finds it scary. Yeah. But she finds it interesting that people even think about her. Or that, not that she became famous, but mm-hmm. that there was this huge to deal about this little little known prostitute in Whitechapel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And I, I want to thank you because you, you give me a, a stage to talk about something I'm passionate about and something that is a part of my life. And so I appreciate that. You're always welcome on the show. You're always welcome on the Event Horizon Show or the Paranormal Chronicles. You're always welcome to talk to us. And if you have anything you want to share with us, just uh, let me know, let Gavin know, and we can, you know, we'll happily have you on again. You know, so thank awesome. you very, Thanks, very much. Sir. And you have a great night. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Bye. And remember, folks, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Paranormal Chronicles Network also. And uh, you can email me at eventhorizonshow at gmail.com. I'm your host, Dave Dominguez, and from the West Texas town of El Paso, thank you for joining us today, and for now, stay safe and be kind to each other. You are listening to The Paranormal Chronicles Network. Please remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Visit theparanormalchronicles.com for paranormal news, reports, pictures, audio, and video content. Find us on Facebook at The Paranormal Chronicles. Together, we explore the unknown. Do you believe in ghosts? A Most Haunted House is the true best-selling paranormal account that has chilled the world. Available on Kindle, on Audible, and in paperbook. Dare you read? Dare you step inside a most haunted house? Good evening, creatures. It is I, Gavin. Now, if you're enjoying our show and would like to support us without chilling your bank account, then when you shop at line at Amazon, simply head to theparanormalchronicles.com website. Click support us on the left-hand side, follow the link to Amazon, and shop away. Your goods won't cost you any extra, but we get a few pence and a few cents as a commission. Think of it as a tip jar, and your support will help us chill, thrill, educate, and entertain for future broadcasts. Next time you shop Amazon, think theparanormalchronicles.com. The Paranormal Chronicles. You have been listening to the Paranormal Chronicles Network. Do sleep well.